Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for Maximizing Ad Automation. We're going to talk about the secrets to Performance Max. I'm Ryan Gibson, and I'm the head of the strategy team at AdLucent. Uh, I've been in the industry for about 17 years, have a lot of experience helping advertisers drive results across search and digital media, and have been really fascinated by the advancements and developments with Performance Max. Uh, and so we're excited to share some uh, opportunities and uh, tips for uh, getting more with Performance Max. To start off, I want to share a little bit about uh, AdLucent. Uh, AdLucent has been in the industry for uh, over 20 years uh, and been managing paid shopping programs for as long as they've existed. Um, AdLucent manages nearly 1.5 billion in media across about 100 clients, uh, many in the retail, e-commerce, and B2B space. Um, and we're Google's largest shopping ads agency by spend, as reported by Google. So we have really solid experience in the space and a lot of experience with Performance Max. Uh, we've actually been testing Performance Max since it was in its beta, beta phase, uh, launching uh, programs uh, late in 2021. A little bit about the services that we deliver. Uh, AdLucent is a performance marketing uh, agency. Um, we manage, uh, in addition to paid search and shopping, we also support uh, and manage paid social programs, uh, display video and programmatic, uh, manage programs across Amazon, creative that helps support those, uh, and of course the, the feed management and, and, and consulting that might go along with that. When you think about AdLucent, we are a technology enabled service provider. Um, we've been developing uh, uh, platforms like uh, our deep search platform for over 20 years. And so when we think about some of the automation and development that Google has made over the years, um, you know, candidly, we had been uh, dubious about, uh, you know, can it exceed the results that we had been able to deliver um, using some other technology? And ultimately, uh, testing and learning into this, we found that in, indeed Performance Max has been delivering great results. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, and we've continued to evolve our technology. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, AdLucent Index and how we use that to help drive uh, more results from Performance Max. Based on some of the latest research we've seen from Morgan Stanley, 61% of consumers are beginning their product research uh, on Google. Um, this is actually an increase uh, up from about 50% in 2020. Um, what's interesting is when we look at this, uh, we typically uh, compare people starting their research between Google and Amazon, 59%. The same research shows that 59% of Amazon Prime members also rely on Google to uh, begin their journey. Not only does this echo the importance of, continued importance uh, to, to find consumers uh, on Google and get in front of them, but it also highlights uh, some of the opportunities that Google sees itself uh, with Performance Max in being able to serve ads to consumers who are in their journey, uh, but maybe haven't raised their hand uh, on the search and results page yet. Uh, so they'll be able to get in front of them uh, with some of the new, um, surfaces that they've included in Performance Max. So let's talk a little bit more about those. When we look at Performance Max, uh, we know that they've added um, Discovery, YouTube, Gmail uh, into the placements uh, of, of Performance Max. Um, so now you're able to reach a little bit further up the funnel um, to connect with consumers. Um, as we think about, as we know, um, one of the reasons that we're finding success with Performance Max at this point uh, is as we've continued to test uh, Google's algorithms, we found that they've gotten smarter and specifically with Performance Max, uh, it seems to work, uh, be doing a better job at finding consumers because it's path to purchase aware. So it understands where a consumer might be in their journey uh, and understands the, the right next ad to put, uh, to put in front of them. Uh, also, we know that with, uh, with Performance Max, Performance Max is preferred within, um, within any given account. Uh, but we also, uh, through our testing, we believe that Google uh, might be prioritizing Performance Max uh, between advertisers in the auction as well. Although it's not something that they state, uh, we have a, a reason to believe that that might be uh, the case that all things given equal in an auction, uh, if there's a Performance Max campaign, Google will selectively serve that uh, over a non-Performance Max campaign. Uh, Google's continuing to evolve um, uh, Performance Max and, and, and focus on what that camp, the, the features and benefits of that campaign. Um, so basically, 
to kind of summarize here, we're looking at, you know, the Performance Max is one campaign that can talk about one product and can be reaching five different people uh, in, in when five different journeys, or it could reach one person at different parts of their journey uh, throughout. So you can kind of see here how we have, uh, you know, being able to reach uh, ads on, on YouTube, on, on Gmail, on display, on discover, and still uh, capture uh, some of those searches. So no matter where someone is, uh, in their 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 journey, we're able to connect with them. So again, this is part of the um, the, the 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 pivot that, that Google's made here to move us away from thinking about um, advertising products or or keywords, but really thinking more about the consumer and who we want our customers to be. And that's going to be really key as we think about uh, some of the tips that we're going to share in in maximizing performance max. One important thing to, to also keep in mind with Performance Max, it's only a part of the new Google ecosystem. So when you think about Performance Max uh, reaching a little bit further up the funnel with YouTube and Discover, it's absolutely true, but it's still only really reaching kind of that, that upper lower funnel, lower mid funnel type of customers. These are people who are in some sort of a journey and, and, and Google's identified them uh, in some way. You still need to run um, uh, you standalone YouTube campaigns, discover campaigns and display campaigns to make sure you're filling that bottom of the funnel. That's where you're going to be able to reach more new customers who might not understand, might not know about your brand, uh, might not know about your category, right? Uh, and so being able to reach the right types of audiences through those upper funnel tools are critical for a, a, full, um, a, a full marketing strategy. So let's talk now, uh, let's get into how we can maximize success around Performance Max. Um, there are five key areas that we're going to touch on today um, on, on uh, secrets to success, if you will, with Performance Max. We're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the product feed and the importance, uh, the continued importance of the product feed. We're gonna talk about how you can be strategic with your Performance Max structure. Uh, we're gonna talk about uh, how you can set your targets and think about your, your, your targets um, overall for Performance Max. Uh, we'll also talk about aligning asset groups with your customer goals, and we'll talk about how you can guide the algorithm to help you find the right customers as well. So we think about our first uh, secret, if you will, uh, optimize the data feed. This is nothing necessarily new. Uh, it's always been important for shopping campaigns to make sure that you have clean data and an optimized product feed. And we're not going to go into all of the, the elements of a, of a perfect product feed, but we're gonna highlight a couple of points here. One, um, you know, Google offers uh, custom label fields that can be used to group or uh, 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 segment the, the products that you have. Um, and so when you think about your labels, uh, you should think about what it means to group those together more from the lens of your business needs and from your uh, consumers needs. So maybe you want to create labels that are high priority products because you've decided you've identified in the data that they're more likely to drive more new customers. So you can pull out a priority group and, and label those products uh, high priority. Maybe margin is really important for you and making sure that you're driving more high margin products versus low margin products. So identifying those uh, types of, uh, of labels. Or maybe uh, it's you know the best way for you to get in front of new customers is thinking about what are the top products for gift giving. So you need to segment out and make sure that the the, the products that are most that are best for uh, connecting with consumers who are looking to give gifts um, are are key. And so maybe that's you know the way you can think about using labels. Ultimately, that'll play into the structure that we're going to talk about in a moment. Um, and and the other piece that that we want to highlight is make sure that the data uh, and the content. Uh, is aligned with what you're trying to say to the consumers, right? So um, titles, uh, the, the content descriptions uh, can actually uh, change and be updated based on seasonality, right? So you might want to make sure that you're changing that, uh, you know, when it comes to December, make sure that those evening gowns you're highlighting that might be great New Year's Eve dresses, you might want to tweak those titles to make sure that they're aligned with New Year's Eve dresses that people are looking for, right? So thinking about the content and how you're using labels are really key for a product feed perspective for Performance Max. Um, so once we think about having, we have the product feed down, uh, the next tip that we have here is how do we think about um, uh, being strategic with the structure? When we talk about performance max, the uh, I believe the, the 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 base recommendation from from Google as a best practice is still to think about you know one campaign. You can actually loop every lump everything in together. Um, and typically, what we found is that you know with uh, 
we're actually able to group into uh, some level of uh, campaign segmentation, right? Uh, we've typically found that, you know, multiple uh, campaigns um, or uh, segments work better, excuse me, multiple campaigns uh, can work as well or better than one kind of uh, all in uh, campaign structure. Um, but that comes with a couple of caveats. One, we need to make sure that um, you have enough data and conversions coming through to make sure that the algorithms can make a smart decision uh, uh, on how to effectively find the right people uh, using your campaigns. Uh, so you want to make sure that that before you start to kind of segment things out and 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 break apart campaigns, that there's really enough data flowing through. Uh, one of some of the early challenges that we saw with Performance Max is that advertisers were saying, "Hey, I'm going to test on a very on my smallest campaign where I very, barely have any um, uh, conversions or customers coming through." And that really ended up being a challenge because you were setting it up for failure because the algorithm didn't have enough data to actually be able to to grab onto and make a smart decision. So in this case, uh, if you haven't already moved to Performance Max, when you're testing Performance Max, make sure it's some of the larger the larger campaigns. Ultimately, um, if you have enough conversions coming through, you know our recommendation is think about how can you break that apart. Uh, and get more focused, each campaign focused around a different customer group, right? One, maybe it's as simple as, let's pull out your priority uh, products from your base products. That's one way that we that we often see is like at least priority products that you uh, are able to think about different uh, targets, different business goals, uh, maybe different groups of people who might be looking for them. Um, if there's enough scale, you can actually get to the point, maybe there's a couple different uh, campaign segments. So, but the idea here is, is making sure that you're starting um, you know, start with more data together at first, and then you can start to break uh, things out um, uh, uh, from that point to, to see where there's enough data. Also, if you do have a, a larger um, uh, data set and you're actually able to do this, uh, one of the ways that we've found success is by uh, actually looking at um, building out geo-targeted campaign structures. So you can actually um, take a look and uh, identify basically a, a matched geo model, if you will. So identifying um, uh, states or DMAs that um, align uh, and really kind of split the country in two, for example. Uh, and then you've built out this, if there's enough data in there, you can actually have a nice testing structure to say, to be able to test uh, different capabilities um, within uh, within Performance Max, uh, and and look at um, uh, 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 what behaviors might might change when you're able to uh, you know test uh, an an asset group in one way uh, in in Geo A versus Geo B, right? So it gives you some additional uh, kind of baseline uh, structure. To be able to be prepared to be able to do some some testing across uh, across the campaigns from structure from a creative perspective etc um so but the the caveat here is this is not uh a a, a 101 level exercise uh and this is something that should really be restricted to some of the largest uh scale campaigns where you uh, can have confidence that you have enough data coming through to segment the data in this way So the next topic we want to talk about is um, uh, talking about uh, return on ad spend optimizations and the, and the targets that, that you want to set. Really, when you think about kind of value-based bidding, those those uh, return on ad spend targets are uh, one of the key control level levers that you have uh, for for getting your results. And this isn't really, you know, the tip that we have here. It really shouldn't be looked at as a as a set it and forget it approach. It's not just about um, setting up uh, a, 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 an ROS target, for example, and saying I'm done and that, that's where it, where it should be. Um, a lot of times when you have a, a program that needs to hit business goals week in and week out, you know, Performance Max is designed to hit business goals over the course of, a, I believe they say, you know, 30 days. And so if you hit, uh, if you have an ROS target, right, it's going to have some fluctuation um, over the, the course of that period, but all in all, it should be hitting your hitting your goals. Um, you know, when you think about the budgets, remember that on any given day that, that the performance max can spend over those uh, campaign budgets. And so you have to really think about what is that that long term impact. One of the key tips we have here, uh, you know, as you're looking at that, 
um, is make sure that you're making gradual um, target changes to help uh, reduce the the occurrence of the system kind of re-entering, uh, you know, a learning mode, right? So uh, we found that you know changes of uh, um, uh, you know greater than fifteen to twenty percent for for either a budget or a return on ad spend goal uh, can trigger uh, a relearning mode. So you really want to make sure that your um, uh, making small incremental changes, uh, but that you're monitoring this uh, on a frequent basis. If there's enough data in there to be monitoring this on a uh, on a weekly basis, you can really kind of see how we we kind of break it out here and we look at the um, the the resulting uh, the results, you know, last week and prior week, and kind of understand what what is that trend and how close are we getting to where we need to be uh, from an ultimate goal perspective. I think the practical um, challenge here. Uh, that, that we all face is our, our businesses have these uh, have business goals that don't necessarily uh, boil down to these strict budget and ROAS target uh, targets week in and week out. And so thinking about that intersection of the consumers you're trying to reach, the, the structure we talked about uh, and how you align uh, these goals with within that structure uh, is, is really the key to how you uh, are able to consistently drive success. Uh, from performance max. Um, the next point we want to touch on is talk a little bit about um, uh, asset groups. Uh, as you know, these are, are, are assets that need to be uh, included with performance max. Um, and ultimately, they're the assets that will be uh, matched uh, when there is an opportunity to serve ads on YouTube, Gmail, uh, display, et cetera, right? Uh, and so, you know, when we, we think about this, one, the, the most uh, important tip I would have here is make sure that you are uh, creating and including assets um, for uh, the, the asset groups in each of your campaigns. Uh, ultimately, you want to think about uh, customer goals for that campaign and, and messaging should really be focused uh, towards that bottom of the funnel. The reason you want to make sure that you're proactively including them is because if you don't include them, uh, Performance Max will create its their own assets. They'll create their own YouTube ads. They'll create their own display ads. Uh, that takes a lot of uh, you know branding control away from you. Uh, it also takes the messaging away, uh, and and sometimes they don't uh, look quite as uh, nice as if you create your own. Um, and so we really strongly recommend um uh populating those those asset groups to align with the types of consumers and the messaging that you um that you want to deliver um as you're thinking about the conversion driving aspect of this right again this is going to be kind of uh you know even the youtube ads like i said are kind of going to be uh upper low funnel lower mid funnel and so thinking about it from that lens um it really becomes something that you can uh, test and learn a little bit to see, you know, what what types of uh, uh, creative messaging has worked well in other channels. Can you bring that into this channel? Uh, can you test and see what type of um, uh, messaging is going to work best for for uh, for your your uh, consumers? And so, one of the uh, case studies that we're always um, uh, proud to share. This is an example of Performance Max results that. Uh, Google shared with us uh, that we've delivered. Um, our, our client at Chico's um, was uh, looking to drive growth for their uh, their Intimates brand. Um, you know, coming out of the, this is one of the early case studies that, that we saw here, right? Um, coming out of the pandemic, uh, right? People weren't necessarily had already purchased a lot of sleepwear, a lot of uh, uh, at, at uh, because they were spending a lot of time at home. Uh, there's also a lot of growing uh, competition in this category. Um, so we actually had uh, Chico's is one of the early adopters uh, for the Soma brand um, for Performance Max, um, and so this. Um, uh, by by layering, uh, by using Performance Max and testing into this, we're able to help find incremental customers, drive more new revenue. Uh, you know, in this example, we were able to drive a, a pretty significant revenue and uh, return on ad spend um, growth uh, from from this program. Uh, as a result, uh, the uh, we expanded um, the the Soma program to to use Performance Max across the entire. Uh, uh, portfolio of their of their products, uh, and we've also rolled it out for Chico's additional brands, uh, White House Black Market, and, and Chico's um, as well. Um, and so, really, that's kind of the now uh, Performance Max is the predominant um, uh, 
driver for for these brands on on Chico. So we're seeing this across um, uh, other uh, a lot of other clients as well with Performance Max, where we're seeing uh, uh, incremental results. This is obviously an amazing, uh, amazingly strong story. Uh, we've definitely seen results um, uh, uh, into the um, uh, um, kind of uh, double digits on kind of what the growth uh, can be or the return um, um, increased on um, uh, return on ad spend. So one of the questions that comes up, there are some uh, limits on kind of um, uh, transparency. And so how do we think with Performance Max? And so how do we think about, you know, the one um, uh, example that everyone always cites is, oh, I lose information about the query. And I think that that's, you know, uh, indicative of the fact that we really need to be focusing on uh, the consumer um, and, and who we're reaching with Performance Max. And so the question becomes, how can we maximize our control and making sure that we're uh, reaching um, the right uh the right consumer the right the right people for our business need um and so when we think about that you know part of that is making sure that we're providing the right signals to performance max into the algorithm um so that google can help us find uh the right customers um you know we really want to make sure uh that you know every um consumer every touch point you have is not necessarily equal. And so how do we help the algorithm understand who the right people are? You know, are there, um, you know, non-transactional indicators that we can use to understand, okay, this is probably going to be a good, a uh, good customer for me, right? How do, how do we make sure that Google understands as much about um, kind of your business and, and who you need uh, to connect with? um as they can to make sure that they're they're making the right connection because at the end of the day if you think about it uh with google has more visibility into these consumers than any one advertiser or any uh agency really could ever have and so by having all of this data they're really able to understand that you know we talked earlier about how uh performance max is really path to purchase aware they should really know where someone is in their journey uh and across their platforms across their services be able to uh, connect with that user. And so there's a couple of ways that we want to think about providing uh, the right signals and the right um, information. And part of that starts with audience. And how are you thinking about, you know, one of the, 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 the questions I get asked a lot is, is how are the ways that you can kind of incorporate um, audience into uh, performance max? And I think there are three key areas. Um, and we're going to spend a, a bit of time on the, on the third one here, because I think it, it's the, the most kind of uh, nuanced and 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 practically applicable, but you know, from the the first piece is is leveraging your first party data, right? So you can uh, feed in first party customer segments, um, you know, who match your kind of ideal customer for that for that specific campaign, uh, so that Google understands more about who you're trying to advertise to. One of the things to keep in mind here is that this doesn't function like our classic customer match might have um, in the past. So I know that. Um, uh, advertisers have used customer match as a way to target a very specific list of people um, and make sure only they were receiving an ad, or they've also used customer match for exclusion lists to make sure I don't want to serve ads to these people because they might be, um, you know, non, uh, not strong performers, right? Um, and in this, uh, with performance max, you don't have that very strict on or off type of capability, but by using in including your first party data, uh, it helps Google to understand more about who you're trying to reach from this uh, with, with that campaign, right? Um, the second piece is leveraging uh, affinity audiences, right? So what are the, uh, what are, this is, you can think about this uh, also, you know, the first party data kind of gets used like a lookalike audience, if you will. Uh, the affinity audience kind of like helps uh, amplify and understand more about, you know, what is the type of category or, um, affinities that you want to try and reach uh, with this campaign, and how do you try and connect with those uh, with those uh, audiences, um, right? So these are kind of two. The first two are kind of this targeting um, approach uh, and giving more insights uh, into the campaign on who who they should be reaching, uh, who Performance Max should be reaching. And the last piece here um, is really uh, kind of thinking about is how do we include uh, the value of the customer uh, in the order at the end of the day, right? And so we think about this from a matchback perspective. A lot of us do matchback to understand, um, you know, what are the uh, consumers, uh, you know, what is the, the value of the, the, 
customers that we're actually acquiring, right? Uh, do they, um, you know, what are the um, attributes uh, and how can we make sure that we're getting more of the people with the right attributes, right? And so you think about this matchback process a lot of us follow uh, to understand who's actually buying from us, right? And so thinking about how you can, can connect that data back into Performance Max can be really powerful, right? So we talked in the beginning that this is a transition where you're thinking more about the customer and the consumer and finding the right uh, consumers um, to, to bring them to your to your business. Uh, and so we can really start to leverage that information and, and integrate it back into Performance Max. You know, I mentioned the tools that we build. We've built a tool that does this, and I'm gonna talk about uh, what it does here in a moment, but uh, the Adlucent Index is what we use to kind of get in between the actual conversion value and uh, and and incorporate uh, additional insights, you know, matchback data, um, uh, uh, third party um, uh, enrichment, right, uh, back into the program so that you can start to effectively kind of nudge the algorithm, nudge the performance max algorithm to find more customers that you want in your business. And so let me kind of explain how that, uh, what that, that illustration uh, looks like. So, if I were to show you two uh, shopping carts, if you will, uh, shopping bags uh, of, of pairs of jeans, there's five pairs of jeans in both of these shopping bags, and both bags are worth, or shopping carts are worth $350. So if we feed $350 back into the algorithm, uh, it's going to say, great, these people, you know, you're it, are about at your average uh, order value, perhaps, right? So they have uh, equal value. I'm going to go find more of both of these people. Um, but what if we knew more information uh, about what's behind each one of these, these uh, the customers who made this purchase? So let's look at some of what we might know, right? So this order on the left, we might know that it's um, the first one here is, is all regular price. So uh, each one of these jeans are full, uh, full price. So we've got full margin in here. This is also a new customer. This is not someone I've ever seen before, you know, in my brick and mortar stores or online. Uh, so this is really valuable for me because I've, I've acquired someone new. And oh, by the way, one of the data points I noticed when looking at their, their journey in their session when they made this purchase, they also spent 10 minutes browsing tops. And perhaps for my data, I know that if I have someone who spends time browsing tops before making a purchase, they're twice as likely to come back in the next six months and make another purchase for me, right? So we think about that this order here on the left. So that's pretty compelling. New customer, good margin. Uh, probably a pretty valuable order to me. On the right here, let's say that this is you know still three hundred and fifty dollars, but let's say these are all on clearance, right? So the original price for this order would have been seven hundred seven hundred dollars, right? Uh, they're all bought half price, uh, so these are pretty high end jeans, right? Um, but the um, uh, exist is it's an existing customer as well. And by the way, when we look, go back and look at the history of the existing customer, they've made five or six purchases from me before, and they've never, ever bought something at full price. So really, they're only buying merchandise from me that's actually that they've taken some of the margin out of because they're buying the, sa the sale items, right? And this might be okay, but in my case, I really want, uh, want to value the new customers more and the value the people who are likely to have a higher predictive customer lifetime value, right? So when we look at what that looks at like, we might actually want to go back and tell Google uh, and tell Performance Max, hey, this person on the left, the value of this transaction is actually $525. So we actually want to value it one and a half times as much um, as the original, the original purchase. And this order on the right, maybe what we're actually going to say is this is only worth about $245. We're only going to say it's about seven tenths of the original value because we really don't want Google to find more of those types of people. What we're really trying to do is help to nudge that algorithm, finding more uh, of the of the the folks that we really want to to uh, drive to to the business, right? With customer acquisition costs becoming higher, it's better to make sure that we're not spending money on everybody, but spending the money on the people who are most important uh, to our business. And a couple of use cases here, right? Not just around driving better lifetime value, um, but how do you think about? You know, we talked about customer acquisition. Um, and so if we're able to, you know, for this is a, um, a, a case study where uh, we actually were working, we worked with an enterprise retailer and they had some key categories where they wanted to acquire uh, new business, uh, more new customers. And so in these, these categories, we actually employed this same uh, approach. Um, 
amplifying uh, the value anytime we had a new customer uh, coming in. Uh, and we're able to drive 9% uh, more new customers with a 17% lower uh, customer acquisition cost, which is really great, right? So you're getting more new customers and you're, you're paying less uh, per customer to, to acquire them. Um, and so the key here is, is that it's, it's able to kind of point the algorithm towards the types of people that you, that you want. And one of the value, the important thing, one of the important reasons to use this method. So changing the conversion value or indexing the conversion value across your orders, uh, that we find more, this to be more successful is you're able to identify information about your customers that isn't necessarily visible to Google and to Performance Max, right? So there is a way in Performance Max that you can um, focus on finding uh, new customers only. But keep in mind that that's new customers as Google sees it. So if you've had a customer who's walked into the store and is not engaged with search and come to your site or has is, is, is come in through Facebook, right? Uh, Google may recognize those people as new customers, but you might say, hey, I've actually saw this customer six months, 12 months, 18 months ago. They're not a new customer to me, so I don't value that as much because I'm trying to bring them back through other channels, right? So by by using this approach and only factoring uh, the, having a higher factor on, on, on orders where you have uh, legit new customers, uh, you can really help to drive uh, what matters most for your business. And then the other aspect, you know, the other example uh, from a use case perspective is is really focusing on 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 that customer lifetime value approach, right? Um, so we'll actually um, for for uh, some advertisers, uh, we'll actually partner with them, or, or or we'll go through and actually look to develop kind of what is that predicted customer lifetime value, and what are all of those uh, attributes or indicators that might uh, help us to better predict. Um, uh, how they're going to perform in the future. So if, like, as I mentioned earlier in that example of, okay, they, they spent some time browsing tops. We know that they're two times as likely to come back in the next six months. So what are the other types of factors like that to help uh, indicate when they're going to be uh, have a better customer lifetime value? How can we get more of those people in? Um, and ultimately, you know, you think about it, um, the, you know, Pareto's rule of, uh, of 80-20 typically uh, holds that, you know, 20% of uh, consumers tend to, to drive 80% of the revenue. So if you're able to find more of those customers, right, uh, you should be able to help uh, grow uh, grow your business from that perspective. And also, when you're even if you're thinking about focusing around new uh, new customer growth or focusing around predictive, you know, finding the customers who are most valuable for you, it doesn't uh, impact your 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 short term goals, right? So typically, you'll see that you know you you still need to drive revenue. You still need to uh, be able to efficiently uh, uh, capture customers. Uh, and so what we found when kind of applying this approach through AdLucid Index um, and indexing those values as opposed to just using Google Automation, uh, we were actually able to drive, uh, this is for a, um, a national enterprise retailer with um, e-commerce and, and brick and mortar, uh, we were able to drive uh, more clicks, uh, drive a much greater conversion value, drive uh, greater revenue, um, and uh, more efficiently um, as well. And so the really, um, not only helps drive better long-term results for your business, but also uh, even the revenue uh, and successes in the short term. And so hopefully uh, these five tips, um, you know, these kind of secrets, if you will, to Performance Max are helpful uh, in, in understanding more about how you can get, get more from uh, your Performance Max program, you know, uh, to review, make sure one, you're optimizing that product feed, think about using custom labels to help influence uh, the structure that you're building, uh, make sure that you're being strategic with your structure. Don't segment uh, your campaigns out so far that the algorithm doesn't have enough data to make sense of. Make sure that you're um, uh, building a structure that aligns with your, uh, your consumer needs and your business needs. Uh, make sure that you're, you're leveraging those, uh, your targets. Um, uh, don't just set and forget. Make sure you're looking at that uh, on a regular basis. Uh, make sure you're aligning asset groups. Most importantly, make sure you're creating uh, assets to go into those asset groups as opposed to allowing uh, Performance Max to create their own assets. Um, and make sure that you're using a process that, that helps to guide the algorithm to find the right uh, c customers for your business. Um, I can't stress enough how, how successful that can be uh, with Performance Max uh, in nudging the algorithm towards the right consumers for you. Uh, it can really help to, uh, you know, 
bring you better customers and and grow uh, revenue more efficiently uh, for you in the short term as well. So uh, we appreciate uh, you uh, listening to our tips and ideas. Uh, would love to talk more. If you have any questions, you can reach out to me, uh, ryan.gibson at adlucent.com. Um, of course, we have some additional resources uh, uh, about, um, you can learn more about Adlucent Index. Uh, we also have some pretty regular updates on Performance Max uh, tips and tricks on our blog on adlucent.com. So thank you, appreciate your time and enjoy the rest of the show.